What would you do if the person you love was married to for over 20 years ruined a perfectly good marriage? You done stayed as long as you could, survived manic episodes, mental institutional stays, prosperity preaching, a change of religion, go as planned, and you stuck with kids and a story to tell. Well, that's the story that I found on TikTok. I had gotten through about eight or nine videos of it, and I was like, rock! And I don't mean Chris Sean, rock, rock, man. I can't believe this happened to you. So we gonna talk about it. What's up, my friends? And welcome back once again to the Just Case and Friends. I'm your homegirl, I'm your tia, I'm your prima, I'm your cousin, I'm your friend, I'm whatever you need me to be down here at the Just Case and Brand. Now down here at the Jaberhood, what I like to do is bring back stories that I done found online that I think me and you are gonna find interesting and it's just gonna have us listening in like, <laughs> it's what I do around here. If you like that kind of content, hey, go ahead and subscribe. Join the tribe. Join our vibe, <laughs> like, comment, man, subscribe. Let me tell you about Rock. Now, Rock Rockman's information is gonna be in the description. Please go and watch all of his videos. It sounds like he's gonna do something like a Risa Tisa. His storytelling is just a little bit dumb, uh, different. So Rock is a black man and at the age of 21, he was working at a men's warehouse with his father. Now this young little baddie comes in. I mean, she's chocolate. She got on this cute brown outfit. Her hair is done, but she's with her father. Her father comes in, he says, I got this suit. I need y'all to make sure it hangs on me right. His dad's like, yeah, okay, we'll do what we do. They're going through and getting the measurements and everything. And while they're getting the measurements, he's looking over at the, you know, the little young baddie and he like, <laughs> I bet you didn't know I knew how to use a needle and thread, did you? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I be sewing up in the club, you know we be going. And she was like, that's real cute or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just out with my dad or whatever. So it's cute that you could do all that. And he like, yeah. So he takes the ticket, you know, takes the clothes, takes down their information, and he forgets as she's leaving out the door. Dang it. He didn't ask for her name or her number. All he got is the receipt receipt all he got is the receipt but the way that he told it he was acting like he had no way to contact her but how faith would have it or how fate would have it he somehow some way miraculously remembered that he had the ticket that her daddy brought but anyway or that her daddy filled out but anyway he, he gets up the nerve to say you know what if she don't come back in i'ma just call the number and i will also call the number because it's time for her dad to come and pick up his suit because it's actually ready so i'm gonna go ahead and call and leave a voicemail which he did and unbeknownst unto him guess who come in to pick up the suit after the voicemail you guessed it, <laughs> little chocolate thing. So when she comes in, he's like, my girl. <laughs> I didn't even know you was about to come up here to see me again. That's crazy. So you feeling me or whatever? And she was like, um, no, really. I was just coming in here because you called and said my dad's suit was ready. So that's why I came on in here to get it. And he was like, <laughs> That's right, that's right. So you said uh, you wanna pick it up? He felt like he was macking her down and she was flirting back. The way I was interpreting it, she was probably like, if you do not stop playing, either you gonna ask me out or you're not. Either you are gonna give me my daddy's suit or you're not, so what's up? And he didn't really know that she was feeling that way, but he was feeling like, all right, well, here's your dad's suit or whatever, so what's up? You trying to go on a date? And she was like, mm, whatever, call me. He calls her, they go on a date, and it's like, choo, 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 sparks. Stars. It's love. And from then on, they're inseparable. They go everywhere together. Every month they celebrate that they've been together another month and another month and another month. And from 1997 to 2001, they're just living the dream. They go to college together. They're living together in the dorms, in the, in the little apartments that the college offers. They're eating together in the chow hall. You know, they're studying together like on love and basketball. I mean, I really don't know if it's like on love and basketball, but you know, they're studying together like love and basketball. They decide, go, go ahead and get jobs. Well, actually, he didn't graduate. Only wife graduated, and she was like, I need you to help me, like, take care of me because, you know, stuff is starting to end. So, what's up? I'm gonna do. They decide they're gonna go and study abroad. I think he meant that they were going on a work study program because he said they moved from where they were at to California. And I was like, Is that study abroad? But, you know, I ain't go to college like that. So, 
don't I don't know I went to high school then everything else was taught by the streets okay so uh, you know answer that for me in the comments because I don't want to be wrong and I don't want to discredit nobody's experience you know what I'm saying they went to go study abroad in California that was okay then her sister got with this sicker than water preacher and well he's also a prosperity preacher and things were going good for them down in Tennessee it sounds like her and her sisters were fairly close because their wife was like okay let's move to Tennessee and he's like uh all right that's cool but you know I don't know I don't know how I feel out there what about work what about this what about that but the way again he explained it is that she manipulated him into believing that it was his idea to move down there so she's very manipulative and she's a smart woman but she has these weird quirky quirky things to her that he loves yet still they get down to Tennessee her parents live there so they move in with her parents and her parents also have their other daughter living there so it's daughter rock wife and the parents all living there for some reason the wife has this manic, manic episode because of a stressful event that has happened within the family when she has this episode it gets so bad that he can't even pull her back into reality she has this episode her parents check her into a mental institution and she busts out he goes and picks her up because he just loves her so much but in the meantime when she goes into this mental institution he does take that and heed that red flag and he says I'm gonna go ahead and leave now that she's away at this mental mental institution she done given me so much stress I'm gonna go ahead pack my car up and tomorrow morning I'm leaving out of here well, when he wakes up the next day his car has been repossessed so he takes that as another sign of fate telling him that he needs to stick this thing out with this woman he gets the car back and when he gets the car back she calls him says come and pick me up from the mental institution he goes down there he picks her up he said the mistake that he made was he didn't go in there and ask them what else was going on with her why is she getting let out she told me that a doctor told her that she didn't have nothing wrong with her and they busted her out of here is that true he didn't go and ask if that was true that was the story that she told him they go on living their lives trying to reconnect and get their lives back on track and the whole family acts this way acts like everything is okay now thicker than water prosperity preacher and her sister they they live in the good life they live in the good life you know he fly aeroplanes he has nice cars he's taking her on trips you know thicker than water prosperity preacher is doing what he told Told sister he was gonna do wife is looking at that like sure must be nice sure must be nice to have a man who has a real job sure must be nice sure must be nice to be able to pay your light bill on time sure must be nice and he like dang i'm not feeling like the man that i'm supposed to be and his brother-in-law he's prospering prosperity preacher he prospering the church is talking about how everybody is supposed to be prospering and how the wife the wife is ain't she ain't supposed to do nothing but spend shop and sew that's what she's supposed to be doing so rob get on his grind he said he became a real estate agent he had a car wash and he was working overnight at walmart i was like you know i feel like your priorities may have been mixed up because he said his businesses wasn't making no money and i'm like mm, maybe then you should to take the time to focus fully on a real job and then had your businesses as side hustles until they made enough money to become your full-time job but what do i know he says that doesn't really work out for him he ain't seeing no money the wife ain't seeing no change in their money and it's like mm, this doesn't make sense it doesn't work for them until network marketing hits the church when network marketing hits the church that's when they start to see their finances oh my god oh my god to do stinky leg stinky leg can you do the stinky leg it starts to increase and when it starts to increase he's like okay now we're on a good time now we're on a good track now we're on a good path they only have one kid at the time they still had two incomes until wife decides you know what the lord has spoken to me that i ain't supposed to have no job husband head of household king of the house yeah 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 that's what my god today has told me i don't want no job and i'm supposed to just sit at the house okay so no mm -mm, ain't doing that so she quit her job but he said she was still very supportive very emotionally there for him made him feel like you know really good inside and then again everything with the network marketing that was very lucrative at the time until it wasn't yep till it wasn't girl so it was kind of starting to dwindle out and they said all right before we lose everything let's go ahead and downsize from our large home to an apartment now mind you thicker than water prosperity preacher and the wife i mean and the sister they getting ready to start on the bravo tv show because rock and wife are so close to sister and prosperity preacher they're gonna be on the show too well they didn't want prosperity preacher and them to know that they were downsizing because then they probably was gonna say something and they were in the position of you know how some churches have mom and dad pastor preachers tell me everything and i'll tell you if god's gonna tell you that's a good decision you know how they have those type of leaders that's what kind of leadership they were under too so they didn't want to tell them that they were having a downsize 
but boom, the show hit at the same time. So God damn, they couldn't even hide it no more. So that's the summary of the ones that I was watching. And now you and I together are gonna watch what I found to be the most juiciest parts of the story. He's at like part 29, 30, something like that. You can go head on over to his uh, TikTok, watch the rest of his content, you know, interact with him, show him love and support. We just gonna watch a little bit of the story that I found interesting and talk about it. So let's go. I do also wanna say he was just recovering from a thyroid operation in his neck. So you will see like that bloodshot around his eyes, but that's literally because in the first, what is it? Like not eight or nine videos, he does have like tissue and stuff across his neck. So just wanna say that. Part nine, how my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. Now I need y'all to know, this is not a plug for the show. I don't typically tell folks that I'm even a part of the show. We keep it very quiet. Why? I don't even think my ex-wife has even watched any of the episodes. We don't really talk about it. As I mentioned, it's not one of the prouder things that I've been involved with. I love my family, love what we do, but just the show, we just don't really talk about it. And also, for anyone that's planning on going to watch the show, keep in mind that it's a reality show. It's not real life. It's a version of reality. So they took this narrative of us moving and not telling our family. They took that narrative and really blew it out of proportion. And they put you in situations that you normally wouldn't be in to create drama. Because in real life, that probably would, us moving and not telling anyone, probably would have been one conversation like, oh my gosh, y'all moved. Y'all didn't tell us, like, is everything okay? Hugs and kisses. And it probably would have been over and done with. But because it's a reality TV show, they blew it out of proportion. Now, I'm going to skip ahead because if you want to see what happens, you can watch the show if you choose to. But like I say, watch at your own risk. No, we ain't gonna watch it. But as a result of all the drama that happened on the show, they are putting a lot of pressure on my wife. She was just kind of the scapegoat of the show. And a lot of it, as I mentioned, just blew completely out of proportion. She's arguing with her sister. She's like, this is my business. Y'all don't need to know everything that's going on. And then now they're doing therapy appointments on the show. And oh, it just blew bad. up into just a tremendous amount of drama. So this is very taxing for my wife, completely understandably. I'm backpedaling financially. So, you know, oh, I'm looking hell. at being a broke brother-in-law again, which is crazy. I'm like, why couldn't they have started the show during the years when I was prosperous? Mm. Now I'm backpedaling, but she always had my back. She was always by my side. She always let me know it wasn't about the money, not about the material. Like, I'm with you, babe. Yeah. So as a result of all the drama that ensued on the TV show, we were also thinking it's maybe time for us to leave and make a move and get out of here. We were thinking of uprooting again for the third time. Like I said, the first time was Detroit. The second time was California. Now we're planning on uprooting and moving to Texas. So that's exactly what we did. Once the show wrapped up, we pretty much got to the point to where we said, we're out of here. The show created a lot of animosity between uh, my ex-wife and her sisters and family just because the way all the drama worked out. And that's reality in the next TV. video, part 10, I'll explain how we move forward in Texas and what happened from there. But if you want to understand anything in between all of that, just go and watch the TV show. But watch at your own risk. Part 10 coming up. Part 10, how my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. Boy, he got so a the first season of the show has wrapped up. Like somebody we landed in Austin, Texas, and immediately things start to take off for us. I find work really quickly. We find a really nice place to stay. My wife at the time still wasn't working, uh, but I told her, take as much time as you need and figure out your purpose in life, what it is that you want to do with the rest of your life. She decided she wants to go back to school, get her master's degree, and become a therapist. Fantastic. Okay, okay, so she didn't Let's have that happen. Okay. So during this time, she was actually still taking classes in Tennessee. So a couple times a month, I'd fly her back and forth to Tennessee. 
Eventually, she transferred to classes in Dallas, Texas, which was really fun for the family because we would load the, load the kids up, spend a couple weekends a month in Dallas. I'm taking care of the kids while mom is focusing on finishing up her study. So that was a really fun time for us. Mm, y'all got money so control. eventually she graduates and now she's in position where she can start contributing to the household. So things are looking really well for us. During this time, the second season of the show is coming around. Now, her sisters had been extending all kind of olive branches to make amends so they could get, you know, their sisterhood going again. Or but just get her back on the show. My wife didn't want anything to do with it. I mean, they would send gifts. She'd send the gifts back. I mean, oh, she, she didn't want anything okay. to do with it. But the second season of the show is coming around, and we're thinking we're far from rich, but we're doing okay. But we're thinking if the second season of the show does really well, it could be a huge opportunity for us. So we decided, okay, we'll go ahead and do the second season. Second season that is as much be. drama yeah, as the I'm first season. Up. It's a reality TV show. Yeah, this is what comes I'm with the package. Stuff, but I don't mean to cut you off. That's what I was just about to say. It sounds like there's a lot of drama that's happening with this reality TV show and everything is not worth your money. That's what we was talking about in the Zeus Baddies um, video we was just talking about. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Y'all already seem like y'all might not be on the same page. Y'all might not be on the same page. If you're like, your sisters are extending this olive branch. You're like, no, 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 no. I don't know. Y'all ain't on the same page already. I wouldn't have did that reality TV show for a second time. No. Mm -mm. So when the third season came around, by that time we were out. There's no way we're going to do another season. Oh, okay. Another season. Fine. And the first and second season were already very taxing mm -hmm. on my wife. Because during this time, I'm still dealing with the manic episodes as well. Now, by this time, I had become a master at dealing with the manic episodes. A couple trips to the hospital, and it was really the same pattern as the first time that I told you. Like, okay, babe, yep, I'm the one that's with the problem. Let's go to the hospital. Okay, yep, I'll make sure they talk to me as long as they talk to you. Let's just get through this. But, you know, in the meantime, I get some mind-blowing sex but I became a master at navigating the manic episodes. So he said, this is what he said. This was his words. This was his words. These ain't my words. He said he felt like when she was going through her man manic phases, she used to give him good pussy. All right. She used to be down with the get down. She used to give him that wet cat. She used to put him to sleep like a Jay Holiday song, put you to bed. She said, what birthday sex, boy? <laughs> I'm a birthday cake, 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 cake. And he said, you know what? This must be my reward for dealing with your crazy ass and having to check you in and out of mental institutions. This is my reward, okay? That's, this, this is what I get. And he was okay with that. He was perfectly fine with that. We kind of got that part kind of worked out, but I did get to a point to where I talked to her and I said, something's going on. Like you may want to consider, uh, seeing a psychiatrist, maybe getting on some sort of medication, because at this point I still didn't have a diagnosis of what was really going on with her. Uh, but she assured me I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. If anything, there's something wrong with you. Like she was talking about me, like maybe there's something wrong with you, which was the same pattern that we had over the years. Uh -huh. But I had become so good at managing life with the manic episodes. I didn't put too much pressure on it. So moving forward, we had also started to build a lot of buzz around media. We had a local show on CBS that we were doing regular segments on talking about relationships. Now, if you want to Look see any of our segments, go to C in the search, type in my last name, Rockman, and you'll be able to see some of our segments. Uh, and we had a lot of good chemistry on the show. We were also doing a radio show, so we're getting a lot of buzz like Things are going really, really well for us. Um, and we were also doing a marriage ministry. We were traveling all over the country. We were doing marriage marriage workshops all over the country. Like things couldn't be better for us at this point in our life. Until her mother got sick. That was the night everything changed. Part 11. How my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. It's January 2020. My wife is now 
almost done with all her requirements for school. She's now in a position where she's about to start working mm -hmm. and now contributing to the household. We're in the development of having our own TV show. We have three wonderful children. I mean, life couldn't be better at this point in our life. Then what happened, meatball head? And then we get a call from Tennessee. Mom is sick. Mm -hmm. We don't know if she's going to make it. You guys need to get up here. Okay, great. We're on our way. No problem. So we load up the kids. Now we got to drive to Tennessee. Not realizing this would be the last weekend that we would spend together as a family. This would be the last weekend that we would be together as a couple. So we get to Tennessee and immediately there's drama because this is years after the show. Oh, and no. my wife is still not talking to her sisters. Oh. And as a matter of a fact, she it. refuses to even be in the room with them when she visits her mom. So we have to That's wait so for her sisters to leave before we go in and check on mom. After some time over that weekend, it turns out mom is pulling through we think she's going to be okay. There's some complications, but we think mom's going to pull through. She's going to be all right. So it was a quick trip. We had to turn right back around and get back to Texas because the kids got to get back to school. I have to get back to work. So we're on the road driving back to Texas. And I'm starting to notice what I've seen so many times before. We're going into another manic episode. Oh, shit. Okay. No problem. I've it's seen this before. Though. I know how to. I'm a master time, at navigating manic episodes. No problem. We can get this done. Uh, except this one is different. Why? This, this one is manic episode on level 10. It's something different about this one. But I'm saying to myself, you, you know what? It. We her mother is in a situation we didn't know if she was gonna make it mm. i totally understand but i tell you what she so one of the signs that i would regularly see when i know we're going into a manic episode and i have to step into manic management mode is she in addition to what i already told you the the crazy sex she gets overly communicative and so I'm noticing on this drive back, she is on her phone and she is sending text messages as long as my intro to this story. She <laughs> is chopping away. She trying to like. Because in his comments, a whole bunch of people was like, dog, oh, get to the story. you." Because he kept being like, you know, 20 years, 20 years. What can you do about 20 years? What do you change about 20 years? What do you see about 20 years? What do you know about 20 years? <laughs> what, what do you see and know and envision when you say 20 years? 20 years, it can't be explained in, in less than 20 years. And that's the thing. And this is like the first video. And he goes along and does this for about seven or eight more videos. So everybody was just like, please just get to the story. T tell us what happened. Tell us what happened. So that's funny that he said that. Fire on that phone. And I'm looking like, <laughs> whoa, my goodness. But once know. again, this is an uncanny situation. Mm -hmm. We don't know, you know, mom is in a bad place. So I'm like doing the normal thing that I do. Buckle down. I got to make sure the kids are taken care of. Make sure everyone's good. And we'll get through this. And then later on tonight, I might get some of that wild, you know. So we that get back home. <laughs> it's a Sunday night. Kids got to go to school in the morning. I have to go to work. Put everybody to bed. It's a normal night. I get up the next morning. My normal routine. Get the kids ready for school. That's a normal routine. Go to day. work. It's a normal day. She's at home. She's resting. I know it's been a long weekend for her. So I go to work. Normal day at work. Uh, and at this time, I was working Uber as well. So I would work my regular nine to five. 
And then from like five until midnight, I would drive Uber just to make some additional income. So I'm, I'm grinding. So I do my normal thing. I get off my regular nine to five. Then I click my Uber on. All right. Now it's time to go to work. Then I start getting calls from the kids. Kids blowing my phone up, texting me, calling me. I'm like, kids, what's going on? Dad, we we hungry. Where's mom at? We don't know where mom is. I'm hungry. I want something to eat. Dad, can you please come home? And I'm like, okay. Um, let me call your mother real quick. I call my Denise, where are you? I, I can't, I'm calling her. I can't get a hold of her. I have no idea where. I have no idea where she is. I'm calling. She's not picking up the phone. She's not picking up text messages. And I'm like, what is going on? Some time goes by and I'm like, okay, I got to go home and take care of the kids and make sure they're good. So I reroute. I'm on my way home. Great. Now I get a call from my wife. Ring, ring. Oh, hey, babe. Yeah, everything is good. I got the kids. Yeah, babe, where you been at? The kids been calling me. They saying they hungry. They said they can't find you. What's going on? Like, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm good, baby. Sorry. I'll make sure the kids get something to eat. Everybody's good. Okay, great. No problem. Fantastic. So I go back to doing my regular grind. Now I'm driving. I'm thinking everything at home is taken care of. Well... I decide to end a little early tonight. So it's around 11 o'clock. I drive home like I normally do. I get home and I pull up. Nobody's home. Kids not home. Wife not home. Car's gone. Better not be no Where school night. Where's my family? It's 11 o'clock at night. It's a school night. Oh. Kids got to go to school in the morning. Where is everybody? Okay. So I'm scrambling. I'm looking around like, where's my wife? I'm calling her. She's not picking up the phone again. I'm sure she is. What's going on? So um, she was sick over that weekend. Like she had a cold and her throat was hurting really bad. So I'm thinking maybe she went to the hospital. So there's an ER that was about a mile down from where we live. So I drive to the hospital. She's not at the hospital. And I'm freaking out at this point. Like, where is my family? So I don't have any other choice. I, I can't figure out where they are. So my only option is just to drive home. So I drive home. I get home. And guess who pulls up at the same time that I do? At midnight. My wife with the children in the car. Now, What'd you get the children out and do? are buzzing What'd when you get they get out, out of the car. Oh, yeah, they're getting out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you get out and do? I'm upset at this point. And my I, wife and I rarely I, argue. Yeah. And I rarely get upset. Yeah. But I'm looking at her like, what? I'm really upset with you. Where were you? I couldn't get a hold of you. What was going on? You had me extremely worried. I'm yeah, thinking like, like, where's my family? And the kids got to go to school in the morning. What is going on? You could have asked a lot more than me. To Here's where that. it gets really bizarre. She's not talking to me. She's whispering. She, because supposedly her throat hurts too much to actually talk. And so she's whispering. Why you think her throat hurt too bad to talk? Gawk gawk 3000, hawk tua. You catch my drift? Why you think her throat sore? Coming home at 12 o'clock, your throat sore. Guess what? Knockout time. Guess what? Lights out time. Wait till I get these children in the bed. I don't believe in it, but I'm about to slap you out. Cause you done lost your mind. Your throat hurt that bad. You've been tough. We've been together all these years. We got three kids together. Your throat ain't never hurt that bad with me. So how your throat hurt that bad all of a sudden? You ain't asking the right questions. And I'm like, will you talk to me and tell me what was going on? I was extremely worried. And she's still whispering. I'll tell you what's going on. So she's not That's giving me sick. any information. That's when you put your hands around her like, just like this. Okay, so we get in the house. I'm pissed at this point. We get in the house mm -hmm. and put the kids to bed. And I tell her like, okay, are you ready to talk to me now? Because you need to let me know what's going on. Where mm -hmm. were you tonight? And why were you out so late? And why couldn't I get a hold of you? Everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. 
Okay. And um, this is just driving me through the roof, all this whispering. So then talk right. she's talking about my throat hurts too much. I'm writing. I'm so then she write notes. But she writing these notes without I don't like it's not giving me any information. She writing notes and just scribbling down jargon that doesn't make any oh, sense whatsoever. And I'm almost out of time on this video, so I'll pick it up on part 12. If she playing crazy, I'm playing crazy. Part 12. Where were you last night? I was don't looking for you. I'm calling you. What's, what is with all this whispering? You got to tell me what's going on. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what's going on. She's still writing notes. She writing notes. And the notes aren't giving me any information. So eventually the kids go to sleep. Kids go to sleep. I give up. She goes, and it's about two o'clock in the morning at this point. We arguing back and forth, but she's not giving me any information. She's not even talking to me. She's just writing notes. And I'm like, I couldn't find you guys last night. I'm, I'm just, at this point, I'm just mad. It's about two o'clock in the morning. She goes and locks herself in the bathroom. When she locks herself in the bathroom, she start making all these crazy noises that sounded something like ha ah, and I'm like, what is going on? You ain't about to fool me into thinking you in there transforming because your ass was out there tramping. Okay, you ain't about to sit there. <laughs> Bring your whole ass out here. Bring your skank ass out here and stop making all these noises before our children think I married an automobile that does its own thing on autopilot. Bring your stupid ass out here, cause now I know. Now, now you just now you so crazy. Oh, I'm so crazy, I'm so crazy. Now you so crazy. You wasn't crazy when you was driving that car home at twelve o'clock at night with them kids in the car, was you? You wasn't that crazy then. You wasn't so crazy to call me in the middle of my second job to let me know that you was on your way home and I didn't need to come home because you were on your way there. You would take care of the kids. You'd be fine. You you wasn't crazy just six hours ago. So now you in there sounding like um the little wild thornberry boy and now something wrong with you. Oh, okay. Oh, but keep playing stupid if you want to, Rock. On in that bathroom. But she, has the, but she has the door locked. And I'm exhausted at this point. So I, I go sleep, to sleep. Go ahead, so this is Monday night. Ooh, I get up sweet. Tuesday morning. And drink. and drink. She's still locked in the bathroom. Oh, so she done went to sleep in there. Okay. She done went to sleep in the bathroom. She comes out of the bathroom all wet. Like I guess she took a bath, all night bath. I'm not even asking about the noises. I'm I'm just so exhausted and I'm trying to figure out what was going on last night. So she's still All night whispering and not giving me any information and not giving me any okay, information. And she's still writing these doggone notes. And I'm getting extremely frustrated at this point. So I'm still fighting and trying to get some information out of her. I'm not getting anything. Now, one thing that I told you guys that what did I tell y'all that comes along with the manic episodes is the crazy sex. You better not. So in the midst of me arguing and trying to get some information out of her, all of a sudden now, guess what? She wants to have sex. Now, I told y'all that. The manic sex is off the chain. The all night bath is the actual red flag. Now, did she smell like apple cider vinegar when she got out? Because nine times out of ten, she was trying to rebalance. Did you hear the water going in and out? You're going off and on, off and on, off and on. Nine times out of ten, she kept on mixing some sort of chemicals and formula in that bathtub to clean that cooch and hooch. Yeah, because somebody been pow, 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 shooting up in that thing. And she had to make sure I didn't have a diaphragm in nor a female condom. But let me make sure ain't nothing in there so he ain't gonna smell nothing, sense nothing. I ain't gonna smell off. And then you turned around and you stuck it right on it. I'm gonna tell you, yeah, you my boy. You our boy. You, me and the neighborhood, we love you. We love you up here. But there's some stuff you just decided. I don't even, 
what am I worried about? You feel me? Because she's in love with me. It's just like, it's a couple too many things you do in this song. This is on a whole nother level as we going into it. She pushing me around. She throwing me on the bed. She just, it is wild. And she asking me to do all this wild stuff to her. And I'm like, yo, like, I know I was upset about whatever you were last night. But now at this point, I'm like, okay, well, at least this is my treat that I get for dealing with this manic madness. So I'm like, okay, you gotta let's want better get for into yourself. it. You really got to want better for yourself. At a certain point, I get over top of her. When I get over top of her, I don't know what she was thinking. She reached up and grabbed me by the balls. And she started squeezing as tight as she could. And I start screaming like a oh. baby. Ah, ah, let me go. And I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Like, I don't know what to do. And she just gripping harder and harder and harder. And this is a moment that I will regret for the rest of my life. Do? As long as the 20 years that my wife and I have been married, you don't say, you don't I say never we'll put my hands on her. But for whatever reason, I said, Janice, you need to let me go or I'm going to smack you. Why did I say that? When I said I'm going to smack you, she bared down even harder. And I'm screaming and I reared back and I smacked her. I regret that. I don't condone putting your hands on a woman. It was the only She said, oh, you're going to smack me? Oh. <laughs> that's what she did that's what she did and you talking about you regret it i encourage it because if somebody did that to me if somebody was like i'm gonna pinch your clit oh no i'm gonna pinch it even harder what boom right to the top of the head elbow best part to hit me boom right to the top of the head because ain't no way you about to do that to me no i don't care what you're into we ain't been into it all these years of our marriage Okay, don't get into this now. Only thing I could think of at the moment, I smacked her and then I declawed her nails out of my ball. She oh. literally had me by the balls. And so now she coming at me. She trying to fight me. She trying to push me and it is just crazy. And I'm trying to get her off of me. It's just madness in the bedroom. So me screaming so loud, woke the kids up because this is like God. five six o'clock in the morning so it woke the kids up kids banging on the door dad dad are you okay what's going on what's going on in there and through the midst of us tussling for whatever reason she stopped and laid down on the floor okay <laughs> now i'm telling the kids kids everything okay we're gonna be all right I'm trying to get myself together, figure out, like, okay, what do I do? I leave out of the room. I close the door. And now I got to try to figure out my normal routine of taking care of the kids. So kids, nothing's wrong. Daddy just got hurt. I'm okay. Uh, let's get you guys ready for school. Okay. And the kids are crying. They don't know what's going on, but I'm just trying to reassure them that everything is okay. So I'm going through my normal routine, getting the kids together. And then all of a sudden, I hear the loudest screams Boy, you coming can't get out no of the rest. bedroom. Ah, ah, ah. And then I hear banging on the wall. Boom, 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 banging on the wall. And then the kids are freaking out at this point. So I go in the room and she is in the room completely losing it. She's on the floor and she's wailing back and forth, screaming, ah, 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 and banging on the wall. Boom, 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 bang, bang, bang. To this day, my daughter can't stand hearing loud bangs from that. Oh. Bang, she banging, boom, boom, ah, ah, ah. And I'm like, 
yo, what is going? I am scared at this point. I was a master at dealing with the manic episodes, but nothing like this. I had to grab my kids and left. So I'm fro. I don't know what, what to do. Put her back. And the first person that I could put think to call <laughs> is my brother. So I call she my brother on FaceTime. I don't remember if I called him on FaceTime uh, or if I called him uh, 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 just on a regular phone. But I'm like, the yo, bro, listen to what's going on. My wife is losing her mind, bro. And my brother's like, yo, you need to call 911. And I'm like, I, go. I'm fr I don't know what to do. Call the police. So I, I get 911 on the phone. They answer, okay, hi, uh, my name is Rock. I'm here with my wife. Uh, she has a history of mental health issues. And um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I she's in help. a position where uh, she's unstable and I need you guys to send someone out here. Okay, sir, is everything okay? Is this a domestic situation? No, everything's fine. She has a history of doing this. She's done this before. Okay, sir. Um, you need to stay on the phone with us and we'll get the paramedics sent out there. Okay, great. Fantastic. Okay, let's let's just stay on the phone. Just monitor. Is she doing okay? Yeah, she's doing fine. This, that, and the other. So while I'm on the phone with the paramedics, she burst out of the room and she is coming at me with everything she got. She's swinging. What? She has some like little metal. Uh, I can't think of what it was but she's swinging it at me she grabbed a broom and she's swinging a broom at me trying to hit me with the broom and then oh, see what this is right here what this is right here this is her being mad at her own decisions to be crazy and to take her fast tail out there and have sex with another man then return to her husband who'd been working two jobs all day and take care of the house and everything now she making up all this i'm so crazy i'm so crazy i can't talk i get all the right things she making all this up She's making all this up to get herself out of a whirlwind of trouble. That's what she's doing. Kids are around seeing all of this. It's and then my crazy. daughter had a blanket and she was holding the blanket up. Like, no, mom, don't, no, don't, don't hit dad. Don't do this. And I'm still on the phone with 911. And I'm trying to manage everything that's going on and get the kids out of the way. And it is just bananas. So eventually, somehow, we get her isolated back to the room. Now the room, the door pushed out toward me. So I got my foot on the door because she trying to reach around the door and she trying to hit me around the door and just trying to get me. And I'm on the phone with the paramedic and I'm trying to, I'm like, okay, y'all need to get over here. <laughs> no, that's and right. And we get a knock on the door. And I'll tell you guys, I'm out of time. I'll tell you what happens next on part 13. Part 13, how my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. So I got a knock on the door, but my foot's still on the door. She's still around the door, swinging at me, trying to hit me. And I'm still on the phone with the paramedics. She yelling through the phone. His name is such and such. He works at such and such. He's crazy. He needs help. Get somebody out of his <laughs> blah, blah, blah. My youngest son is at my legs, punching at me. Daddy, daddy, leave mommy alone. I'd be like, if you so, boy, while I get this knock on the door, I'm like, okay, these are the paramedics. So I'm thinking, if I let this door go, she's going to rush me. So I'm trying to think what to do. So my daughter's standing over there. I'm like, go answer the door. And the kids are just stunned. They they don't want to do and anything. they're probably scared. So I'm like, okay, I got to get this door. So I'm, I'm like, whatever. If she rushes me, she rushes me. So I let the door go. I go answer the door, thinking it's the paramedics. I open the door. I'm staring at a police officer. How you doing, sir? Uh, is everything okay? Um, can you tell me what's going on? What happened? And I'm like, okay, I explained to him just like I just explained to you guys. You know, my wife has the history of mental health issues and manic episodes. She, we were being intimate. She grabbed me by the balls. I smacked her and everything exploded from there. Police officers like, okay, now while we we're talking, we had walked to a certain part of the house where I could look in the bedroom. Now, just two seconds ago, 
I'm thinking she's about to rush me, but now we're standing right in front of the room where you can look inside and see the room and she's laying on the floor, butt naked. Because like I mentioned, we were just about to be intimate. So she still doesn't have any clothes on. So she's laying over the floor, not laying on the floor, not a stitch of clothing on. Police, myself and the police. She said, I'm so crazy. I'm so crazy. I can't put on no clothes. I can't put on a sheet. I'm crazy. Oh God, she really is crazy. Story, he says, okay, do you mind if I go in and speak with her? I'm like, okay, if you need to, go right ahead. He goes in the room. When he goes in the room, she getting up from the, you know, I could see her getting up like, you know, she dazed and confused. She was looking at the police officer and telling, you know, I guess tell, telling him whatever, you know, whatever she was saying. Cause I couldn't hear, I could see inside, but I couldn't hear what she was saying to the officer. So after some time, police officer came back and talked to me and said, yeah, we need to get some help in here. Do you want me to get the paramedics? I said, duh, that's the reason why I called in the first place. So now, he leaves out to get the paramedics and I'm thinking to myself like, okay, we got to get some, some clothes on her. We got to get her covered up. So I'm asking my daughter, like, help me get her dressed. Let's try to get some clothes on mom. You know, we're trying to get clothes on her, trying to, and she is, she not having it. She doesn't, she not letting us do anything. So I'm like, okay, well, let's at least put a blanket over her. So she's at least covered up because at this time she's still laying on the ground. So we put a blanket on her and the paramedics come in like four or five paramedics come in. They go directly to the room and they surround her. She's laying on the floor. They surround her. Okay, ma'am, are you okay? Is everything okay, ma'am? Uh, we're here to help you. And then after a while, she stands up and she's in the middle of the circle, butt naked, all these uh, uh, paramedics standing around her. And then it starts to get a little intense. And then it starts to get to be a little bit of pushing and shut. And it's just, who, it's who, starting who, to who, intensify. Who fighting? And they're like, ma'am, ma'am, you have to relax, ma'am. Oh. We're going to have to get you out of here, ma'am. So you know, and then they came out and said, look, we're going to have to, we're going to have to close the door and deal with this. So they closed the door and I could hear from outside of the door, ma'am, we're going to have to take you out of here. Ma'am, do you want us to give you a shot? We're going to have to give you a shot to sedate you, ma'am, to get you out of here. And, and I'm hearing all this tussling going on. And then they're like, okay, yeah, let's give her the shot. Go ahead and give her the shot. And boom, I guess they gave her the shot because after a while, everything kind of settled down. They brought a stretcher in, wrapped a blanket around her, put her on the stretcher, strapped her to the stretcher. <laughs> so then now they're wheeling her out of the house on the stretcher. They wheeled her right by me. And when they did that, she took her ring off of her finger and like, like licked it like that. Like, and then looked me in the eye. She threw the ring and looked me in my eyes and said, I'm divorcing you. And then I was like, okay, babe, like, I'll see you at the hospital. Cause I'm thinking to myself, like I've what? seen these manic episodes before. It's never been this intense, but I'm thinking she's just talking out of her mom. So they wheel her out. Now I'm standing here. It's just me and the kids. And I'm like, what just happened? And I'm just trying to figure out what are the next moves that I need to make? Okay, I can't. There's no way I can go to work today. Okay, uh, look, I got some situations going on at home. I need to take the day off. Okay, no problem. Go ahead and take the day off. So then now I got the kids. Now, originally, I was trying to get the kids to school before everything blew up. And so now I'm like, and this was a big mistake. I don't know what I was thinking, but I took the kids to school. Oh, so they could tell everybody what <laughs> and was And I took my youngest to daycare. Oh. Not thinking about the trauma they just experienced, but I'm just trying to piece together, like, how do I deal with this situation? Yeah. So I get the kids to school, youngest to daycare. Now I got to go to the hospital and check on my wife. So I get to the hospital. And when I go, how you doing? My name is... My wife is, she's here. Can you let me back to go and say, I'm here to check on her. Okay, what is your name, sir? 
okay, one second, one second, sir. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm waiting a while, like, okay, just one second, sir. And I'm like, why am I waiting? Like, just let me back there to go check on my wife. So then after some time, a police officer comes out. Police officer is started asking me questions. How are you, sir? Okay, yeah, I'm officer, such and such. And uh, could you explain to me what happened, uh, the situation that happened in your home? And then I explained them just like I just explained to you guys. Uh, yep, she, uh, you know, we were being intimate. She has a history of manic episodes and mental health issues. Uh, she grabbed me by the balls. I was in pain. I smacked her. I regret doing that. And uh, everything blew up from there. Okay, okay. Well, uh, she said you raped her, sir. <gasps> and uh, did you forcibly put your thumb in her whatchamacallit? Wait, she said I did what? She said I raped her. Yes, sir. And did you forcibly put your thumb in her whatchamacallit? Well, yeah, I did. But she asked me to do it. Uh, and he's just going on and on about supposedly I raped her and did all these crazy things to her. And he's like, uh, so you're going to have to wait. She doesn't want to see you. She is not going to let you back into the room to see her. And uh, we have a detective on the way. And you're going to have to talk to the detective and explain to him what you just explained to me. Because right now, this is an investigation. Really? Okay. No problem. That changed quick. And we'll pick up the rest on the next part. And this is all because, remember, she doesn't Part 14. Late. How my perfect 20-year marriage abruptly came to an end. So I'm at the hospital. I'm talking to the police officers. They're saying this is an investigation, sir. And your wife is saying that you raped her. She's saying that you beat her, that you knocked her unconscious. Did you do all these things That's to her, sir? Wild, boy. And I'm talking with the police officers and I'm going through the whole story, mm -hmm. telling them exactly what happened. Then one police officer leaves and another police officer comes over. Same line of and questioning. then they ask me, can you tell me what happened, sir? Explain to me what's going on. Then I got to go through the story again with the next police officer. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to have to have now. a detective come out and talk to you, sir. Okay, no problem. Then I'm sitting there waiting for a long period of time. And then another police officer comes over and I have to give the whole story again. It was like three or four police this officers manic episode came and now. spoke with me. And then I'm thinking, like, are you guys ever going to let me check on my wife and see my wife? No, that absolutely cannot happen. Well, I said, um, because I knew, obviously, she didn't have any clothes on. She was butt naked when they took her out on the stretcher. So before I left the house to go and check on her, I had packed a bag with, you know, clothes and things that I thought she might need. I said, well, can you guys at least make sure she gets these items? Because when she left the house, she didn't have any clothes on. They said, okay, uh, that's a little odd for an abuser. I've never seen that before. An abuser I'm not an come abuser. to the hospital to check on. Why would you say that? Why would you say I'm not an abuser? Uh, so, yeah, we'll, but, yeah we'll make sure that she gets the back. But based on what they were saying, I think they're understanding the story that I'm telling them. So now I get a call from the detective. The detective uh, wants to... You know, I'm running through the story with the detective. I'm telling him everything that happened. And he's like, OK, well, I need to come to the hospital to talk to you. Um, I need you to just stay there where you are. And it's going to take me. I think it was like I had to wait an hour, hour and a half. OK, Maybe no problem. Detective shows up to the hospital. I run through the whole story with him. And then he says to me, OK. Now it makes sense. He said, I spoke with her and I spoke with your wife and what she was telling me, it was it was jumbled. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but now it makes sense because I went through everything with him. You know, last night, you know, uh, she had the kids out late. She mm -hmm. was in the bathroom all night. Uh, we arguing. She's writing these notes. Uh you know, then the next day we were intimate. She grabbed me by the balls. I smacked her. I went through everything. And then he said, OK, now the story is adding up. It's making sense. Uh, he said the next step I want to go. To, I need to take I need to go to the house so I can take pictures and finish my investigation. Uh, 
I said, okay, no problem. But I asked again, how is she? Like, where is she? How is she doing? Is she still here? And I, hours, this was hours I had been sitting at the hospital. He said, well, she's already been released from the hospital and she's actually on her way to get the kids. I said, there's absolutely no way y'all need to let her get those kids in the state that she's in. And after telling the detective the story, he totally understood, you know, with the history of mental health issues and things like that. He totally understood and agreed with me. But he said, I got to get you to the house so I, I can finish my... Do I feel like she might have, might, might, might have some sort of mental health issue? Sure. I do believe that, yeah, she's probably going through something. There's probably some pinup frustration with maybe life not going the way that she expected it to go. Maybe him not working, things of that nature. I do believe that there could be some sort of stress and everything. But to this damn level, you ain't coming home on time. You spending all night in the bathroom. You saying your throat hurts to where you can't speak up, writing notes, but having this crazy sexual energy towards me. But then saying that I raped you and I did things to you that I didn't do to you. Like... When does it stop being being like, oh, this is a crazy manic episode? And when is this somebody manipulating their mental illness into a cover up for them to do dumb shit outside of the marital bed? Because that's what I'm starting to feel like this is. Investigation. So we drive to the house. And at the same time that we pull up to the house, just by fate, that ain't no life fate. is pulling up at the exact same time. So now. I'm standing on one side of the road. She's standing on the other side of the road. They're not letting us go in the house. Pol police officers over there talking to her. Then they come over there and talk to me. Detectives going over there talking to her. Then they come back and talk to me. And then the detective says, okay, I need to get a mental health officer to come out and talk to her. Okay, great. Let's make that happen. So. They have a, after some time of waiting, a medical police officer came out, spoke with her. Then they came back over and spoke with me. What okay. We're going to have to take her to get her some help. We yeah. can't disclose to you where we're taking her. Yeah, uh, she fine. doesn't want to be here tonight. We do need to take her to get her some help, but we need to let her in the house to get some of her things. And then we'll let you go in the house. Okay. Okay. No problem. So then I see her going in the house. I guess she's gathering her items. She's coming back out. And in the distance, she's looking over at me. And it was just a surreal moment. And then, boom, she drives off. And, and they did let me know, we're not going to let her get the kids. We are going to release the kids to you. Uh, but once again, the detective still needed to get in the house to finish his investigation. So the detective comes in the house. And I take them through everything in the house. Here are the marks on the wall where she was banging on the wall. This is what happened. And I'm showing him going through the whole story and showing him exactly where in the house everything was happening. Detectives in there taking a bunch of pictures, mm -hmm. you know, filing, doing whatever it is that he has to do to get to the next process or the next step of his investigation. Mm -hmm. So now they, they leave, the detective leaves. Okay, I got everything that I need and uh, gives me a card. Uh, it's still an investigation, so we'll, we'll be in contact with you. Okay, great. Uh, now, I got to gather myself. Now I'm sitting in the house by myself. Gotta cry. Gathering my gotta thoughts. Just had to cry. Everything that just happened. Cry and drink the bottle of wine. And now I got to get myself ready to go out and get the kids. Yep. And before I leave, I get another knock on the door. And I'll explain who that was. In the next part. Okay. Part 15. How my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. So the detective has gathered all the information that he needs, mm -hmm. lets me know that he'll follow up with me about the investigation mm -hmm. and leave. Now I'm sitting there by myself. I'm looking around at all the madness and the signs of the madness that just took place. My mind is spinning and I'm just trying to take a minute just to pull myself together. Before I could even get a chance to do that, I get a knock on the door. Okay, who's this? I go answer the door. Hi, sir. My name is such and such. I'm with Child Protective Services. I knew I it. I need to speak with you. I knew it. Okay. Is it okay if I come in? Yeah, sure. Come on inside. 
Sir, I've gotten some information that you've been doing some inappropriate things with the children. Are you doing this, that, and the other with the children, sir? What? Absolutely not. What are you talking about? Listen, where are you even getting this information from? That's if this is coming up. from my wife, I need to let y'all know. That's so She rough. has a history of mental health issues. We just had it. The problem with that, too, is there's so many off uncles, fathers, brothers, nephews, men and families who really do touch on their own. And to say that about a father who doesn't, I don't care how crazy you are, that's not okay. That ain't never okay to say. And this lady, like I said, I'm starting to get the feeling, maybe you ain't that crazy. Maybe you just, you don't know how to deal with stress. You don't know how to emotionally regulate yourself and you cover it up as mental illness. A lot of people do that. Huge blow up the other day. And she keeps she trying to set up to his hospital. life and I don't even know where she is. Sir, I can't disclose where I'm getting this information from, but we need to get the children to have a forensic interview done. I've already been the, to the school to talk to your children. You went to the school and spoke with my children? Yes, sir, I've already spoken with the children and you need to get them to a forensic interview. Uh, and also, you can't take them. You're gonna need to, oh, either we no. can take pick your children up and take them, or you can find someone else that can do it. Oh, oh, what? I can't even pick oh, my kids up. Oh, Sir, you need to find on. someone else to do it or we need to pick the children. Listen, y'all not picking my kids up. I make a phone call to my friend. Listen, I'm having a day that you cannot believe. I need your help. I'm sitting here with CPS. They're talking about I need to get the children to an interview. Can you please help me? And they said it needs to happen today. I got you. No problem. Friend agrees. So they leave. My friend picks the children up. And now I'm waiting for what feels like forever. After some time, I get a call back from my friend. Listen, they said everything you said checks out. They're going to release the children back to you. Oh. I'm on my way back. Yay. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Yeah. My children get back home and I just hug them and yeah. I'm praying with them and they're asking me, where's mommy? Where's and mommy? That children, I haven't heard from mommy. Right. I don't know where she is. I'm sure she's okay. Let's just pray for her. Let's just pray and hope that she's okay. That night, we all just got in the bed. I wanted everybody close. We all got in the bed together, just piled in the bed and we go to sleep. The next morning we wake up and now I gotta be strong for the kids. Yeah. I gotta make sure they get everything they need. So I gotta get my youngest to daycare. I gotta get my two other children to school. Then I gotta get to work, which was yeah. about a 30 minute drive. I go to work, I let my job know, look, I've got some personal things going on. I'm going to need to leave work early today because I got to get my kids from school. I don't have anyone else that can help me. I need to get the kids from school. Okay, no problem. Do whatever you got to do. They allow me to leave early. I leave that day, go back to get the kids, go home that night. Same question, Daddy, where's Mommy? Children, I haven't heard from Mommy. I don't know where she is. She's not answering any of my calls or texts, but we're going to be okay. We're just going to pray for Mommy. We all piled in the bed together that night. We go to bed. I get up the next morning. I got to do it again. And then the next day, I got to do it again. Mm -hmm. Then a week goes by. The same pattern. Still haven't heard from my wife. Then two weeks go by. I still haven't heard from my wife. Then three weeks. Then a month goes by. Still haven't heard from my wife have no idea where she is i'm just in this rhythm of picking the kids taking the kids to daycare taking the kids to school going to work leaving work early back getting the kids dinner in the same rhythm day after day still haven't heard anything and i i just i just don't know what to do at this point but i'm just trying to stay in a good rhythm and be strong for the children so then on one particular night the kids I'm trying to have a fun night with the kids. And we got this old iPad that 
one of the kids was like, oh, dad, I found that old iPad. I want to, uh, is it okay if I use the iPad? Sure, no problem. So I plugged the iPad up and, um, you know, after some time, you know, it charges up and it comes on. When the iPad comes on and I slide it open, all I hear is whoop, 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 whoop. I'm like, what is that? It's text messages coming in on the iPad. So then I, I, I click the messages and I see all these text messages. This is the iPad that's connected to my wife's phone. And I'm like, oh. And I began scrolling through all the messages that I'm oh. seeing. And she is saying the most salacious, heinous, evil hatred. She she crazy, but she ain't that crazy, is she? Things about me, talking about me like I'm the worst person in the world and the detectives are going to come get him. He thinks this is over and... This, that, and the other. CPS is coming after him. He's going to go to jail. And we got everything set up and lined up. And they're going to get him. And they're going to do this, 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 that, and the other. And I'm Who's like, she talking to, I wonder? Oh, my gosh. What is this that I'm seeing? And I just don't even know how to collect myself like I'm like what in the world uh -huh. is going on and we'll talk about what happens next on part 16 part 16 how my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end so I got this tablet I'm getting all of my wife's text messages I'm seeing everything that she's doing, everyone that Ooh, she's, she's talking, talking to. And now I'm taking this tablet everywhere, anywhere I go. I can barely oh, focus on work because I'm constantly you checking this tablet, her. finding out where she is and what she's doing. But ah. she's still not responding to any of my calls or text messages. Uh, so the but big event, so just to back rewind a little bit, the big event that happened was on 1-29-20. Now we're getting into March. And, um, you know, this is around the pandemic. So my job is talking and about sending event, people home he went to because of the COVID. Break. So she ain't talking. And I'm to thinking this will be very helpful because I don't have to do all the back and forth driving and all of that. So that'll help me out, actually, if I can start working from home. But before that happened, I get a text, a text message, particularly that I see that says, I know he's going to be at work. From this time to this time, I want to go get my stuff and get back before he gets back home. I'm like, OK, so I do my normal routine, drive from work. I get the kids, go to daycare. I come back home. Why y'all think she want to sneak out? Door. I walk past the kitchen. I see a basket that we used to keep on the kitchen counter is not there. I go straight to the bedroom. I open the bedroom door. I go straight to her closet. I had a closet. She had a closet. I go straight to her closet. Everything is gone. All her clothes, shoes, bags, and his hangers dangling everywhere. And all the stuff I guess she don't want is just scattered on the floor in her closet. What do I do with this? I'm shocked because she's gone, mm -hmm. but I'm not shocked because I already saw and was prepared okay. for mm -hmm. what she was going to do. But I'm like, man, she actually did it. Now, what do I do? So the kids are asking me, daddy, daddy, where's mommy's stuff? What's going on? Children, I'm sure everything is OK. You know, mommy just probably had to get some of her things. Let's just pray. Let's go to bed. We all pile in the bed. We go to sleep. God, this Wake up like the next looking. morning, same routine. You know, I drop the kids off, daycare, school, work, same routine. So about a week or so after this event happened, one night I'm sitting at home. I get a phone call. It's my wife. 
Hello? Oh, hey, hon, how you doing? Yeah, you know, I just wanted to let you know that I'm okay. I just, you know, taking a little bit of time and, you know, everything is going to be fine. Maybe sometime this summer we can talk about our relationship, but I'm just taking a little bit of time. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And I'm not asking her, like, where have you been? What's going on? Because I already see where she's mm -hmm. been in the text messages. I already see the stuff that she's saying about me to different people, how I'm coming down and I'm going to jail and CPS and detectives and all this different type of stuff. And she doesn't realize that the detective had already wrapped up the case and had labeled me the victim of a violent situation. Oh, and yeah, there's court. So I mean, weird. there's, you know, documents on that and everything. But I'm just like, OK, yeah, no problem. Then she says, OK, do you mind? Do you mind if I talk to the kids? Sure, you can talk to the kids. So I get a phone to the kids, put it on speakerphone. Hey, kids, how y'all doing? Yeah, this is my mom. Oh, my God, we're so excited to talk to you. Oh, Where have you been, mom? Mom's doing OK. I'm just getting better. Mom is just getting some rest. How you guys? I miss you guys. How y'all guys been doing? Oh, mom, we've been doing good. Everything is great. This, 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 that, and the other. And I'm just listening on the speakerphone. So then she's like, okay, it's time to go to bed, kids. Do you mind if I sing y'all a song? Oh, yeah, mommy sing us a song. And then, like, I don't remember what song she was singing, but it was, la da 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 It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. And then the kids go to bed. Okay, get a phone back to daddy, kids. Okay, then I'm back on the phone. Okay, hey, hello. Okay, yeah, hon, like I said, you know, maybe around this summer sometime, we'll talk about our relationship, but I just need to take a little time right now. You tried to play this, you. Just that and the you other. And I'm just thinking like, okay, like I don't know what to say because I'm already seeing everything that she's doing in the text messages. And I could have confronted her I could, there's so many things that I could have done in that moment, yes. but I've never dealt with anything like this. So I, I just, I have no Frozen. idea how Frozen. to deal with it. And, and, and I didn't know how to confront the situation. Yeah, hon, like I said, summertime, we can talk about our relationship, but do you mind if I... She took, <laughs> she took six months off her whole family, off her whole family. It was playing crazy. I told you she wasn't, she wasn't really crazy in real life. Were you crazy in real life? You can't strategize all these plans. She talking shit behind his back to 17 different people, avoiding her children, but then also knowing to call him to act like she's all calm, cool, collected, and she just needs some time to herself. That's player. That ain't manic. That's player. Sing you a song? Yeah, you can, you can sing me a song. La da 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 do 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 Okay, well, I'll talk to you later. Okay, goodbye. We hang up. I'm like, okay, now what? Yeah, and then cool. this happens where we just start to... Now she's talking to the children. She hadn't seen the children, but now every couple of nights she'll call sing to the children she'll call sing to me and i'll tell you what happens next on the next part part 17 how my perfect 20-year marriage abruptly came to an end so over the next couple of days i'm still getting the calls i'm still getting the singing but i'm thinking to myself at least the children are speaking with their mother on a regular basis but I'm just so stressed out at this point. I'm dealing with so much. I got the kids. I got work. I'm managing, yeah. managing my wife being gone and the emotions of that. And I need some help. So I make a call to my brother. I'm like, look, man, my mind is in a whirlwind, bro. I need you to get down here. You know everything that I'm dealing with right now. I really need you here. My brother agrees. Within the next day or so, he's on a flight and he's here. He brings my dad along with him as well, which is really comforting with everything that I have going on. It's really comforting to have my dad and my brother by my side. When my brother arrives in town, he also makes a call to my wife and says, hey, dad is here. I'm here. We know about everything that's going on. Would it be OK if we came to see you just to check on you to make sure everything is OK? 
She agrees that she'll meet, but under the condition that she does not want to see me. Okay, whatever we got to do. She wants to meet at a mall. She gives us she gives us a particular spot that she wants to meet. So we all load up in the van. We drive to the mall. When we get to the spot, everyone gets out. I'm sitting in the car by myself because I want to respect the. F I'm gonna say what he should have did. Every time she's sitting up there talking, I don't want to meet you. I can't be around you. It's so hard. It's so hard. I would have been like, I don't want to be around you either. It's hard for me to be around you too. No, you can't sing to me. Stop making her feel so special. You don't you don't be rejecting nothing that she be doing. You just be letting her do whatever she want to do. That's the issue. You ain't got no boundary set up for yourself that says, nah, because you you done told CPS this about me and that about me, and now I don't know what's going to happen with me and my children. No, I can't even fool with you like that. You ain't got no boundary set up for the girl. And this moment for me was extremely surreal. It's nighttime. This is the first time the children are about to see their mother since she was taken out on a stretcher on 12920 when the big event happened. It's now like the first week of March. And so everyone is in high anticipation of seeing her, including myself, because this is my first time seeing her since that day. So I'm looking around like, where is she? And after some time, I see her come around like a corner, almost like out of the bushes. And she's looking a little disheveled, but it's just a surreal moment because this is my first time seeing her. Then I see the kids run up to her, they're hugging and kissing. I see my brother and my dad and, you know, the kids are excited and she's there. You know, they're just there conversating and, you know, whatever they're doing. After some time, they come back to the car and my brother tells me. Yo, when we went over there, we were looking for her and she like jumped out of the bushes. It startled us. It scared us. And I was like, yeah, I saw that as well. And, you know, he says she was saying she was, you know, her life was in danger and she was scared. And that was part of the reason she didn't want to see you. And I'm thinking her life is in danger. Like, bro, like, you know, I would bring no harm to my wife. And he's like, absolutely. I know. But like, I didn't understand the things that she was saying. But we took that. <laughs> Didn't really know how to process it. We leave. So my brother's like, okay, I need to have another conversation with her just to understand how she feels from her perspective. So he says, look, he calls her again. Hey, why don't you come to the house, hang out with the kids for a little while, and then you and I can go out and I can kind of get an understanding of what's going on from your perspective. She agrees. Now, she's no, she knows that I'm going to be there. And the children are there. And when it's time for that to happen, she arrives. And when she walks in, she's walking on a cane. And I'm thinking, what is she? Why is she on a cane? What happened? You did it. But you did it. You know, it's I'm just glad that she's it. there. And this is our, our first time being together in the home since the day that the big blow up happened. So this is another surreal moment. So we're sitting around. Everything seems to be going well. It's pretty normal. It's kind of weird. And I'm also thinking, is this like the beginning of maybe we can start piecing this back together? Like we're all in the same home together, even though it's a little weird. Everything seems to be going pretty good. But, you know, I take that thought and, you know, I'm just trying to process what's happening in this moment. So now my brother and my wife, they leave they go out for dinner so that they can talk. After some time, they're gone. They come back. My wife says her goodbyes. And then my brother tells me what they discussed. And he said, she told me that you gave her a traumatic brain injury, that you did this, that, and the other. Uh, and that was the reason why she was walking on a cane. And I'm thinking a traumatic brain injury. Like, bro, I told you she had me by the balls. I smacked her, which I greatly regret, but I don't see how that could lead to a traumatic brain injury. And he agreed. He's like, yeah, once again, some of the stuff she was saying didn't make sense, um, but that's what she told me. So we do that. After a day or so, my brother has to get back home. He leaves. Now I'm thinking she's been to the house. We've all been together. Maybe once again, are we piecing this back together? Are we trying to figure it out? So I think maybe I'll invite her to the house again. So I call, say, hey, look, kids would like to see. If somebody tells me or tells someone around me that I gave them a traumatic brain injury, I'm not inviting you to my house. You're not coming to my home. 
I'm not about to call you. I'm not about to talk to you. I'm not about to deal with you. I'm not about to be around you because I can't trust you. I can't trust you, especially in the situation that he done been in. CPS has been called and you know that she's the one who told CPS that you were no good for your children and is telling people how you about to go down and you still trying to think of ways that you can work it out. Well, she must have that walk. And I do understand sometimes people be like crazy coochie, the best coochie, but damn, it can't be that good. So are you letting her basically ruin your life and your kids' lives? Because if you're not in their life, imagine them having that type of mama. Who's she going to take the anger out on if you ain't there? It's going to be them kids. So what you need to do is create some separation between you and her. Stop trying to be there for her. I don't, I don't know why he's so in love with her after she's treated him so bad. But again, I guess this is like that victim thing. Like that that's what you go through. You keep on thinking this person loves you, even though they're giving you example after example that they don't. See you again. Would you like to come over to the house to hang out? And she denies it. Nope, I don't want to come. The only reason that I was comfortable being there is because your brother and your dad were there. But I would still like to see the children, but I no. don't want you to bring the children. Supervised Can you arrange it for one of your friends to bring the children for me to have some time with them? No problem. So I call my friend. I'm like, look, she wants to spend some time with the children, but she doesn't want me to bring them. Can you take the children for me? He agrees. So the next few days, my friend is taking the children to hang out with their mom for a couple hours at a time. So that's going pretty well. The, seem, the children seem to be excited to be seeing their mother. And it's getting very close to spring break for the children at this point. So she lets me know that she now wants to spend the week of spring break with the children. Now, around this time, she had somehow figured out that I was tracking her text. So she had me blocked. So I didn't know where she was at this point. But the meetups with the children were going pretty good. And I'm like, I would like for the children to be able to have some time with their mother because they hadn't done any overnights at this point. And even though I don't know where she is, I agree. Like, OK, you can have spring break with the children mm. as long as you make sure you bring the children back after spring break so I can make sure they get to school and get back on the rhythm that they're supposed to be. You crazy. You crazy. You crazy, crazy, crazy. Somebody got one time to report me to CPS before I sit up there and think that we about to be in this comfortable co-parenting situation again. No, I ain't about to send my kids with you nowhere until we get a court order saying that if I call the police and you still got my children, that I can go ahead and get them back nice and easy. I ain't got to worry about you telling people I done knocked your head loose. I ain't got to worry about you telling people I put you on a cane. I ain't got to worry about none of that because it's a court order. Yeah. She agrees. But I was not aware of the surprise that she would have waiting for me on the day she picked the children up for spring break. And I'll tell you what that surprise was on the next part. What do you think it is? Part what 18. Think it is? How my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. So we're getting into the week of spring break and I've agreed to let my wife have the children for spring break vacation. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking to myself, is she going to try and pull a fast one on me? Yes. And, like, take the kids? Correct. So I immediately say, I need to get her on tape. And I don't know why I thought this, but just I'm in case sense. if I find myself in a situation where I got to fight for my kids. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to her. I said, look, I know we got a lot of things going on. Would it be okay with you if we met just so we can discuss? And I was honestly thinking... Like, can we figure out how to mend this together? So she agrees. I'm surprised, but this is exactly what I need. So we go and meet. She wanted to do it in a public place, which is fine. And before I walk up to her, I take my phone out. I hit record. I leave my phone out. And then now I'm leading her in a conversation to exactly what I need her to say. Okay, hey, we agree that you're going to have the children for spring break yes and you're gonna bring the children back on this day yes i'm gonna bring the children back so now she's admitting i got it on tape cool that's exactly what i need so now we get into the day where it's time for the children to be picked up i'm expecting her arrival but instead one of her friends show up to pick up the children that's fine it's a mutual friend so i'm like no worries 
So I get the children together, pack the children up. They want me to meet them outside. Okay, I take the children outside, load the children up. They get in the car. And as soon as the children drove off, if you blink, you missed it. As soon as they drove off, I see a guy walking up to me really quickly, sticks a document in my hand and say, you've been served. And I'm like, what? I've been served. And so I take the document. I go inside. I pull out the document. It's divorce papers. And I'm thinking to myself, she actually Let it go. did it. Let it go. She's divorced. Let it go. Let it go. And I immediately think my assumptions might have been correct. If she, she drove off with the kids, I got this document at the same time. I was right. She's about to try and take the kids. It's the perfect setup. Right. So I'm thinking, what do I need to do next? So I immediately make a phone call to her. She's not answering the phone. I called several more times that day. She's not taking the calls. And so I'm thinking, I think I was right. And so around this same week, everything shuts down for COVID. And I find out after vacation, the children are going to now be homeschooled. They're not going to be returning to school. Oh, well, we get home. through that week. Now it's time for the children to come back home. Guess what? Children don't coming. come back home. Mm -hmm. So now I reach out to her. She's not taking my calls. Right. I send her a message. Hey, look, we agreed that you were going to send the children back at this time on this day. I need you to bring my children back. She denies it. No, I'm not bringing the kids back. Everything is shut down for COVID. Look, this has nothing to do with COVID. We agreed that you were going to bring the children back. I need you to get the children back so I can make sure they got everything they need for school. Nope, don't worry about that. I got everything they need for school. They fine. I can't bring the children back because of COVID. And it's just a bunch of back and forth. So I give up and I'm thinking, okay, I'm facing a divorce right now. Mm -hmm. So I got to get smart. So I go to YouTube University and I start researching as many uh, divorce videos that I can find. I'm reading as many articles as I can Good job. find. Good job. And one of the things that I pulled out was if someone is denying you access to your children, you have to show that you did everything you could to see your children. And you also have to show that they are denying you access to your children. So I started messaging her daily saying, look, you, why won't you let me see the kids? Can I please see the kids? And I'm begging, please, 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 please let me see the kids. Now, I know that she's going to deny me. I'm just looking for her to give me the response that I need. Mm. But also, I really do want to see the children as well. Yep. But she's not letting me. She's denying me tooth and nail. And then one day, I get a phone call. Hi, sir. Uh, this is Dr. Such and Such. Are you the father of, and they name one of my children. Yes, I'm the father. Yes. Uh, I apologize, sir, but that appointment for your son, uh, we're going to have to cancel that appointment. Uh, would you like to schedule for another day? Can you remind me what time that appointment was? Oh, yes, sir. It was on this day at one o'clock. Okay. And could you give me the ad? For some reason, I can't find the address. Could you give me the address again? Oh, yes, sir. It's at boom, boom, boom. And they give me the address. Okay. So you got the location. Thank you so area. much for the information. Okay. okay yeah, I will okay. call back and reschedule. Okay. I hang the phone up. Uh oh. -uh. Now I know exactly where I need to be next. Uh huh. Part 19 coming up. All right. Bring it. All right. I'm doing just fine. Do you have a moment to speak? Oh, hey, I'm doing really good here. I'm on a webinar right now, but I can call you back after. Could you please? I would really appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Can I ask one question before you go? Yeah, it's you know, I'm on a webinar right now, so hopefully it's going to be short. Go ahead. Um, is there any reason why you're not allowing me to see the children?
you know, this particular thing. So I'm just trying to figure out if we can come to some sort of agreement. No conflict, no nothing, just I miss my children. Yes, Abdul, and I'm not preventing you from seeing them. Uh, I'll call you back and I'll, I will follow up with you, okay? Okay, thank you. Part 19, how my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. I ain't trying to say nothing, but um, I don't I don't know if we all the same color or same skin tone in here. Uh, tell me in the comments if you think I'm tripping, but that voice sounded different, sounded different. So now I have this information. Uh -huh. There's a doctor's appointment coming up that's been canceled. They called me instead of her, so I know she's not aware that it's been canceled. So now I know what my next move needs to be. But before I do that, I make a phone call to her and she accepts the call. She's not always taking my calls, but this time she does. And I say to her, look, why are you denying me access to the children? I want to be able to see my kids. She's saying she's not denying me. Oops, accidentally she, flipped up in you know, she's too busy. She's not going to, you know, she's got too much going on to even talk to me at this point. And she just won't let me see the kids. Okay. Well, I got to move forward with this next plan. So on the day that it's time for us to meet at the doctor's office, I make a call to my friend. Look, I've got some information. There's a doctor's appointment for my kids. You know, I'm not, she's not letting me see my kids right now. But I want to go to this doctor's office and I don't want to make a scene. I'm not going to run up on her. But what I want to do is if maybe we can follow her so I can at least know where she lives and have some comfort in knowing where my children are. He agrees. So we go to the doctor's office. We park far enough away where we can see the entrance to the doctor's office, but far enough away where we know she's not going to park and be able to see us. And this part was like slow motion when I see her after some time finally pull up. I see my children. I see her head pop out. I see my children. And I really want to run up and get my kids. Yeah. But I don't want to cause a dramatic scene. I know that so feeling. I just wait. Oh, I know that feeling. They go inside Ooh, of the doctor's hard. office. I'm thinking to myself, they're telling her it's canceled. Within five minutes, here she comes walking right back out. They get in the car. Now me and my friends slowly pull out. Now we're behind her. That baby and we're got driving. cancer? But as we're driving, they're getting further away. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. My friend is driving. Like, like, I'm uh -huh. like, man, you got to pick it up. I don't want to lose him. But he's like, I don't want him to see us. I don't care, bro. Just drive the car. Get up there. Get to him. So a little bit of back and forth of that, we hit a red light. We hit a red light. They keep going. We lost them. God dog it. And I'm telling them, bro, I got to find my children. He gives me the idea. He said, hey, I got another idea. What if you get a tracker and put a tracker, stuff it in something? I'm like, bro, I'm not even seeing the kids right now, bro. Like, I need a lawyer, which is exactly what I do. I get a lawyer. Good I explained to the lawyer what's going on because before this I was pro se I really didn't know how to handle the situation but now I'm into it I got a lawyer I explained that I'm being denied access to my children my lawyer goes right into action reaches out to her lawyer and thankfully we arranged for me to be able to That's have an exchange with That's the children for work, baby. but the only way she would agree to the exchange because she didn't feel safe is that if we met at the police station, no problem. So on the day where it's time for us to do the exchange, I hadn't seen my kids in months. Mm. And I'm, I was fuming, but I'm excited to finally be able to see my kids. She pulls up, children get out of the car and they just run to me and we hug and we loving on each other and it's amazing. Oh. We get to my home. And I remember my friend said, get a tracker, which I immediately went out, bought a tracker, and the kids had like a little toy car. I took that car apart, put the tracker inside, stuffed it in, 
And then when I went back to the police station to re-exchange the kids, I said, hey, look, the kids wanted to take a couple of their toys with them. And uh, would you mind if they, yeah, just go ahead. So two things, I might be wrong. She might be a sister. Cause now that I remember on Thicker Than Water, the sister was black. So she, I think she's, okay. I do think she's a black woman. I thought she might've been a snow bunny, but I think she's really a black woman. I do want to make that correction. Two, now, Rock, I don't know. Just get a little, oh, this how your face looks, how I feel. Oh, I don't, that tracker, I mean, I get it. But it could also backfire in the wrong relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have a baby daddy or a baby mom who you just need that space from, this could backfire. But in that instance, what I would say, don't never take their um, backpacks or anything with them. Like you got your separate set of stuff. I got my separate set of stuff. We'll need to be sending backpacks. You know what I'm saying? Something to have a safeguard in place. Put those in the car, the car, the little toys and everything. No problem. All right, y'all have y'all have a good 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 time together. Now I got him. She accepts the toy. I run back home because, you know, the tracker was connected to like an online site that you had to go to where to show you exactly what's going on and where they are. So I run back home and I immediately, literally within an hour, that tracker did exactly what I needed it to do. Now I know where they live, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to run up and cause a scene, but at least I know where they live. And we'll talk about what happens next on the next part. Okay, so here we go. The chase and the tracker. Let me see. I sent you a pic from my other phone, but a tracker. Put a tracker in one of the voice trucks. It's screwed in and doesn't move or make a sound. Undetectable to the untrained eye. And then... Okay, so I think she's definitely a black woman. Looks like she drives her a nice little whip, though. Okay, she got her little BMW. All right. Look like some boy was like, awesome, yeah, I look like we did a right, man. Okay, well, I guess you did. Oh, shoot, I might have had them in the right order then, because this ain't 19.5, 19.5. I think the first one that I had before this was 18.5. So, okay, we on the right track. Like I said, we, y'all know what we doing over here. And then if y'all want the full story, y'all want my condensed version, go to Rock Rockman what? <laughs> Rock Rockman what? Part 20, how my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. So now I know where she lives, but I'm not going to run up. I'm not going to cause a scene. Just knowing where she is when she's with the children is enough for me. So now we're getting into a normal rhythm over some time of exchanging the children. We're still meeting at the police station, which I'm not totally happy about, but she's saying this is the only place that she feels comfortable and safe to exchange the children. So I kind of have to agree. So we're starting to get into a little bit of normalcy of changing the children. You know, she's keeping them a week. I'm keeping them a week. And we're getting into a little bit of a rhythm. On one particular day that we exchange the children, it turns out that it's June 5th. Now, if you remember, I told you we met on June 5th, 1997. We got married on June 5th, 2000. And now we're meeting at a police station to exchange our children on June 5th, 2020, which would be our 20th wedding anniversary. And I'm just searching my mind in this situation. And I haven't totally lost hope in the relationship yet, which people have told me I'm crazy for. But okay. Okay. I haven't totally Thanks. lost hope. So I go out and I get a big bouquet of roses. When we meet at the police station, I get out of, I get out of my car, I go over to her car. And I say, who would have thought we'd be celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary under these conditions? And she agreed. You keep showing your and weakness. I hand her the rose. You keep showing your weakness. When somebody keeps on telling you that they don't want to be with you or keep on showing you that they don't want to be with you and you keep trying to show them why they should be with you, they just look at that as an opportunity to manipulate, control you, and do what they want to do. They know, oh, you still sweet on me. You still, you still gonna do what I tell you to do. You still gonna do what I want you to do. Okay, then. Okay, now I miss you. Now you can come back around. Okay, now I don't want you. Ugh, now I'm not feeling like that about you. They have a lot more control in the relationship emotionally, and they can tug at you a lot easier because your nose wide open. 
your nose wide open saying, go ahead, come use me, abuse me, as long as you sometimes love me. You put you you keep showing your hand too much after this woman done ran over you with two 18-wheelers and a semi-truck, her and her homegirls, they on the phone like uh, uh, Fast and the Furious, talking about once you run over him, back up, because I'm going to back up over him too, then you run forward again. That's what's happening to you. She takes the roses, she says thank you, and she throws them in the passenger seat. And then I say to myself, look, I can take them back. If you don't want the roses, I'll just take them back. She says, no, you gave them to me. I'll keep them. But based on the way she handled the rose yeah, situation, I'm starting to, I'm, my hope is dwindling. Good. But I hadn't lost to, I hadn't lost hope fully. Uh, however, on one particular day after that exchange, I'm going through her Instagram account. I'm lurking her Instagram page. Yeah, I lurk her Instagram page, whatever. I'm lurking her Instagram page and I come across a picture. And I don't know what it is about this picture that made me realize the relationship is over. She's standing on a balcony. It's an oceanfront view. It looks to be maybe in Florida. And I'm not even realizing that she's traveling at this point. <laughs> She's got an outfit on that I've always found to be particularly sexy. And she has less on under this outfit than even I remember. And she's just standing on that balcony with a look in her eyes that there is not a care in the world. And I'm also thinking there's probably a man on the other side of that camera. Taking the picture. And at mm -hmm. that point, I realize it is over. And also during this time, I had started seeing someone else as well. Okay. So I wasn't being totally faithful to the relationship at that time either. So at this point, it's over. Yep. And I just got to figure out a way to move forward in what is now our new normal. So it's still COVID. And so now I'm at home. Also, uh, this is why you don't date people when they're going through a separation, going through a separation. We're not seeing eye to eye. We're not together. We're not together. But you sitting up there taking roses to meet at the police station. And you're supposed to be dating me, but y'all ain't together. But you sitting up there thinking about her day and night, trying to stalk her Instagram, stalk where she going, um, deciphering what she has on in the pictures and when she bought it from Fashion Nova. But you're separated and y'all ain't going to work out. Uh-uh. I'll never date nobody. I'm separate. all alone when I don't have the children. And I think about my brother who says he was going to try to come back down to try and figure out a way to come back down to provide me some support. So I call my brother and he says, look, man, I want to get down there to help you. But do you remember when I was sick, when I came up there to see you? Yeah, I do remember. He said, you remember I thought I had a hernia? Yeah, I remember that. Did you ever go to the doctor to get that worked out or figured out what that was? Yeah, man, I did go to the doctor. I have cancer, bro. Oh. And I'm like, what? I have cancer. I'm having to go through chemotherapy. Oh. I have to go through blood transfusions. Man, it's tough. But you know how we are, man. We're going to push through. And I'm like, absolutely, bro. Do what you got to do. And I'm realizing he's fighting for his life. I'm fighting for my family. And we got to be tough in this moment. No, you're not. You're not fighting for your family. You're, fight, you're fighting for your idea of what your family could be. But I think in this instance, it would have served you well if you had like a big sister or a mom or an auntie or somebody to tell you, I'm going to hold your hand when I say this. It's over. It's over between you and her. It's You're not fighting for your family anymore. There comes a time you got to, you got to accept for yourself. You ain't fighting for your family. So after some time, after finding that out about my brother, I get another phone call. Hello, who is this? Hi, is this Mr. Rockman? Yes, this is Mr. Rockman. Are you the father of, and they name my children? Yes, I'm the father. Yeah, I need to meet with you. Okay, but I already met with you guys before, and the last case was unfounded. What, what is this about? Well, I need to meet with you. They come to my house. They sit down with me. Sir, we have some information that you've been doing some inappropriate things with the children. Have you done this, 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 that, and the other with the children? Absolutely not. I've been through this already. The last case was completely unfounded. Where's this information coming from? I got to imagine this is coming from my wife again. And I told the last CPS person that 
uh, there's no way that any of this happened and my wife has some mental health issues. Well, sir, anytime we have an investigation, we have to take it seriously and we have to follow all of our steps. Well, I'm asking them what happens if a person is making false accusations? Well, Finally. there's really nothing we can do as far as that. But if someone makes a claim, we have to follow through with it. And another thing, sir, we're going to have to keep the children in the care of the mother until the investigation is over. So you're telling me I can't even see my kids while I'm going through this process, yes. even though the last claim Correct. was unfounded? Yes, sir, we're going to have to get through the whole process. Okay, let's get through it. There's nothing there. And after a couple of weeks, exactly as I told them, it comes Thank back you. unfounded. It's complete. And I'm totally shocked. At this point, I'm totally upset. I get my children back. I hug my children. And we're trying to figure out where do we go from here. And I'll tell you guys what happens next on part 21. Part 21. How my perfect 20-year marriage abruptly came to an end. So now I'm realizing the relationship is over. There's nothing I can do at this point. So I decide to move to a different area just to lower my expenses and get prepared for everything I'm about to face. Um, around this time, it was time for us to have our first court hearing. So when we go to court, the judge asks, where are you all exchanging the children? And then we say we're exchanging the children at a police station because for whatever reason, she's claiming she doesn't feel safe. But uh -huh. the judge doesn't buy it. And the judge decides that we're now going to exchange the children in my area where I've moved to. So I'm kind of elated because this is like my first victory in this whole process. And the judge says something that I thought was very interesting before we left. He said, be careful because these things don't always go the way you think they're going to go. And so I like that's interesting. But then we move forward. So now it's coming around the time for the children to go back to school. So in the area where I live was a wonderful school district. There were the schools were right next to each other for the children. All they have to do is take a bus and a bus bus to school and a bus back. And they're done. Very simple. My ex claims that she still lives in the same school district where we were before. But I know that's not true because tracker. remember, I put the tracker on her and I know that she's living in a shelter, which is not in the same school district. So then I tell her, I say, look, provide me documentation that the children uh, that you live in the same school district. And I'll agree, even though for me, this is like a 40 minute drive. But I said, I'll agree to let the children stay in the same school district if only if you provide me documentation. But I know she can't provide the documentation. Right. So then. But I'm like, but I think this new school district where I am will be much better for the children. And I said, we don't have to put Max in daycare anymore. They all will be very, very close. We cannot come to an agreement. So it comes to a week where the children are with me. I take the children over to the school. They look around. They're excited. Look, children, you, the schools are right next to each other. Max doesn't have to go to daycare anymore. You all can be right in the same area. They love it. They're excited. So then I talk to my ex again. I say, look, I took the children over there. They love it. They're excited. They think it's great. Can we just go ahead and let the children go to this school? Because I know she's not in the same school district. But I don't let her know that I know that, but she still doesn't agree for whatever reason. So now we're at a standstill. So now it comes time for the children to actually start school. And it just so happens on the week that school starts, the children are with her that week. So you can imagine what she did, yeah, right? Don't let them go. She started the children at the school district of her choice. Now, let me explain to you what that looks like for me. 40 minute drive from the new area where I live. We got you. No, we got you. Max had to go to daycare. Right, but right, I'm right. thinking no, I'm just going to yes, keep him in his kindergarten as opposed to going to daycare. But then the other two schools for my other two children are about 10 minutes apart for each other. So you're talking about dropping off at three different locations every single morning, picking up at three locations every single afternoon. This is bananas, as opposed to a bus ride home and a bus ride back. 
So on that week, she started them at the school of her choice. Now it comes the following week, the children come back to me. Now I have a decision to make because I'm thinking, do I go ahead and go just court. let the children, like forget what <laughs> she's doing. I'm gonna pull the children out of that school so high, and I'm just gonna enroll them in this much easier situation for everybody, including my ex. Uh, am I just gonna go ahead and just enroll them there and say, forget what she's doing. But then I think, well, if I do that, when the children go back to her next week, yep, guess what she gonna do? She gonna pull them out of my school and enroll them in the school. And I'm like, I'm not gonna play that game with the children. So I decide I really just wanna do what's in the best interest of the children. That's my own, that's, that's my only focus at this point. And even though I know this is gonna be much, much, much more inconvenient for me, for the sake of the children, I decide the best interest of the children is for me to just keep them in the school district where they are. That's I gotta drive this. 40 minutes. I gotta do three drop-offs. But guess what the children don't have to go through? They don't have to go through me enrolling them one week in this school and then going back to their mama and she enrolling them. And then I have no idea what that will look like because we hadn't at that point gotten to, um, we hadn't at that point gotten to a final decision on who would have final custody of the children. We ain't got to get to no final decision on who would have final custody of the children if she's sitting in there hitting walls, falling out on the floor, being naked, going through all these episodes. It, it, what do we, after you tell me that you don't want to be with me, after you report me to CPS, after I find all this evidence of it, after I'm able to confirm that this isn't a safe situation for not just me, but my children, I'm about to pull all of your mental health records and take you to court. And I'm about to act like you wasn't nothing but a surrogate to me. On behalf of my children, oh, that's exactly how I'm about to act. I ain't about to give you no type of leeway. If I find out where you at, I don't care if it makes you not trust me with our kids. I don't care because my goal is to make sure my kids are in my care. So if I can't believe you put a tracker in my kids' toys, take me to court. Take me to court and take them kids from me. And I want you to provide that the kids can live with you full time, knowing that you live in a shelter and I'll be able to provide it with too. Like, what's up? Take me to court. But we'll find that out as we go forward in the parts to come. Part 22, how my perfect 20 year marriage abruptly came to an end. And this is so our now she has to come, my ex to my town to pick up the children for exchange. I'm no longer meeting at the police station. So on one particular day, she decides to send one of her friends. Now this is a mutual friend of ours, so it's not a big deal. Um, but when I'm with my children and we're driving to the exchange, I say, Hey, your mom's not picking you up today. Her friend that we know is picking her up. And my son says, dad, I don't feel safe when I go over there. And then I talk him through it. Like, what are you talking about? Son, you don't feel safe. And I try to gain a little bit of understanding, but this is a mutual a friend of person. ours. So I don't really, I really kind of talk my son into it. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, these are our friends. No worries. But Don't we're in a different situation in. now. And so, but I asked my son, do you want me to say something to them, you know, about the fact that you don't feel safe? Just so I can make sure it's cool when you go over there. Yeah, daddy, I want you to say something. So when we pull up to the exchange, you know, pleasantries. Hey, how are you? How are you? And I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know. You know, my son said he doesn't feel safe sometime. I just want to make sure, you know, everything is cool over there. And she's like, what? Don't feel safe. Oh, oh, you know, we treat them just like we treat everybody. You know, everything is cool. And I'm like, OK, well, you know, I just still wanted to let you know, just so you can understand that I want to make sure my son is good when he's over there at your house. And so, you know, we figure that everything's fine. Like I say, the kids go on about their way. And then immediately as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, why did I, my son just said he's not safe. Yeah. Why did I send my son there? And I call one of my friends. I'm like, look, man, I'm thinking about going to pick my kids up. Like my son said he doesn't feel safe when he's over there. And my friend was like, well, look, 
I'm going to give you some advice. If you go, take a police escort okay. with you because okay. he already knows now all the drama I've been dealing with with my ex. So he says, take a police escort with you. So I'm like, cool, that's exactly what I'll do. Now, I had I had gathered some intel to find out where this friend lives because they had moved since my wife and I had split. And my wife is telling, you know, my ex is telling them that I'm a lunatic and I did all these wild things. And so now they're acting like they don't want me to know where they live. But guess what? I found out where they live. And so I pull up, I get the police escort and it just goes crazy from there. I'm totally chill. Like, I'm like, as long as I get my kids, I'm good. But she is yelling at me and cursing at me mm -hmm. and telling me I'm all these this, 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 that and the other oh, because I'm coming to get no my kids. How you going to be mad at me? Because I'm coming to get my own kids. Mm -hmm. And so, like, she is, you know, saying all these things to me. But I could care less. Because I'm, long as I get my kids, I'm good. So, I leave. I get the children in the car. I leave. And I explain to my children that I, m the most important thing for me is to make sure that they feel safe. And I will do anything to make sure my children are protected and safe. And, you know, the kids were freaking out a little bit because she's yelling. I got the police there. But I said, children, I brought the police because I didn't want it to be any drama. And as it turns out, it turned into a little bit of drama with all the yelling and all of that. So that was a good move and a good, good advice on my friend's part to bring the police along. But I'm you know, I'm explaining to my children, your safety is the most important thing to me. And that's the only thing that matters. Uh, and so, you know, they like I said, they were a little emotional about it, but I think they understood. But guess what? I got it on tape because at this point I started recording everything. So coming up next, you guys get to hear what happened. You want me to say something to them? No, I'm scared. Because I can say something to them. Please do. Okay. But I'm scared too. No, I'll say something to them. Dad! 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 Where's Dad! 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 How are you? How's it going? Are you taller than me? Wait a minute. Did you just like have a gross bird in like a month? Like, what just happened? <laughs> Did she? I promise. Like, like, seriously. Like, I just saw her like a month ago when she was not this tall. <laughs> How you been? I've been good. How about you? Yeah, been good. Been good. Josh is a little worried because he said sometimes I feel like y'all mean to So. Mean to? Yeah. So I figured I'd say something to you. Mm -hmm. Take it easy on the brother. Mm -hmm. We treat him the same way we treat everybody else. Yeah, we're going to say something to you. Okay. Alrighty. They're good. They're good. Mm -hmm. This next part is when I arrive at their house with the police escort. Jay, duh. Hi. Come on, man. Hi, Josh. You got all your stuff? Yeah. What? Oh, my God. He said, why are the police here? That's her husband talking. Asking if they had everything. Now she's about to start yelling at me and tell me I'm not welcome at her place because I'm picking up my own kids. Thank you all. Thank you. She yelling and cussing at me because I'm coming to get my own kids. Can I get the uh, Percy, please? I don't care. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I told her it's two sides to every story, and she told me I was a sick person. <laughs> I just didn't want to believe in everything that my ex told her. so sorry to do this first of all but the most important thing to me with you guys is your safety now when we Stop first pulled up it. oh no when we first pulled up what was the first thing that joshua said mom says she could be here at 7 30 but i said i can't stop you from taking the kids okay. before then mm -hmm. she says she would try to get with you and georgetown and do some kind of exchange fine. with georgetown yeah. PD today y'all can work that out that's fine um these people um, expressed to me that they're that you weren't supposed to have the address. They don't know how you got the address from here. They don't know why you're here, and they're not supposed to know where this place is. Okay. Um, I'll let them know. I can't do anything about that at this point. Right. But if they if you come back over here and they want you criminally trespassed to where you can't come up to the property, no then unfortunately I have to do what I have to do as, as far as that. Which means I'll give you a piece of paper that says don't set foot on the curb of the property. Otherwise, you go in jail for it. Listen, man, I'm just trying to protect my kids. Yeah, I know. I hear you. I said I'm just trying to protect my kids. That's the reason why I came to get you guys, because I thought about it when I left. Like, if you ever said, Grace, if you ever told me that and we were going somewhere to daddy, I don't feel safe. The first thing that I would do is come here. If Maximus said, Daddy, I don't feel safe somewhere, the first thing I would do is come get Max. If and Joshua said what did Joshua say? I don't feel safe. Daddy, please. Yes, make us live in the worst week because of me. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Josh, it's not because of you, Josh. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. This was always there. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's the only reason why I came, because I thought about it after I let you guys leave. I said, Joshua said he doesn't feel safe. And I let him go. Josh, so I just don't feel safe. Yeah. So if any of you guys, whatever the reason is, if any of you guys don't feel safe, I have to do what I have to do as a father to protect you. I said I have to do what I have to do as a father to protect you if you don't feel safe. This is a little unorthodox. It was fun, man. <laughs> the most important thing of all is that I protect you guys. Remember this moment. Shadow of a doubt. If you ever tell me you don't feel safe somewhere, you know exactly what your father's coming to. I said, if you ever in a place where you don't feel safe, you know exactly what your father's going to do. I ain't going to hold you. That last part has me iffy, iffy, iffy. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I don't want to prejudge because he still has like 10 more videos left in the series. It seems like he releases maybe like one or two videos a day. So the series is still going. You can follow him. His um, TikTok is right on in the description box. Let me know what you think down in the comments because this, this was a good little story talk. I feel like it's two crazy mother suckers together. That's what I'm starting to feel like. And they just shouldn't have been. They was toxic from the beginning. That's what I'm starting to think. But you know, like I said, tell me what you think down in the comments. I have been the Just Case and Brand. I am so thankful that you guys tuned in. Please make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with a friend, because you never know who needs to learn about the greatest husband in the world. Getting cheated on. Indeed. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.